Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 3.01 solutions. Now just like a lot of words in chemistry, the word solution in this case does not mean an answer. Instead, it's a whole different vocabulary word and so we will be talking about chemical solutions. So in chemistry class, a solution equals a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Now remember when we have the word homogeneous, the prefix homo means the same and that goes with part of the definition. The substances are completely and evenly mixed down to their individual molecules. They do not contain parts that are visibly distinguishable. Think about lemonade. You can try all day, but the chances of identifying individual particles of sugar, water, and lemon juice molecules in that substance are pretty low. Lemonade is a homogeneous mixture, a solution. However, which parts of this picture make this technically a heterogeneous or different mixture? Well, if we look, there are definitely some differences. It's not the same all over, right? We have a chunk of lemon, we have some ice cubes on top. So because we have layers and different pieces that we can see, technically this picture is heterogeneous. If I wanted it to be homogeneous, I would have had to just talk about this part of the lemonade. So just lemonade. No extra ice, no extra wedges to make it fancy, just the lemonade. And a good way to think about homogeneous mixtures are the first drink would taste exactly the same as the last drink because the lemon, the water, the sugar, it's all evenly mixed around. So the lemonade itself would be a homogeneous solution, although like I said in this picture because I have layer of ice and a lemon wedge, so a chunk, technically this whole picture would be a heterogeneous mixture. So heterogeneous, different parts that you can see or different layers. Homogeneous, homogeneous or homogeneous means the same throughout, just the actual lemonade. Solutions, which are important parts of chemistry and everyday life, demonstrate how matter interacts. Most drinks are made of water with sugars and other solids dissolved in them. How do solids dissolve in water? What factors speed up or slow down the dissolving process? Solutions are all around, from a glass of lemonade to seawater. In this unit, you will learn the definition of a solid and much about the chemistry of solutions. So this specific lesson, we're going to talk about what a solution is and a few of the characteristics. But really, the entire unit, Unit 3, is going to be about solutions. So again, a solution is a homogeneous mixture. And solutions are composed or made of a solute dissolved in a solvent. So we have three vocabulary words here. We have solutions, solute, solvent. In fact, this lesson has a lot of vocabulary words, so let's start defining them. First of all, a solute. The solute is the thing or the chemical that is broken down or dissolved. So in the lemonade, it would be the sugar. The sugar is broken down and dissolved. That would be the solute. The solvent is a substance, usually a liquid, that can dissolve other substances. The solvent is usually water. So it's a silly way to remember it, but it's how I remember. Because look at these words, solution, salute, solvent. The salute dissolves in the solvent to make a solution. It gets a little hard to keep track of them. So I look at the V in solvent. And if you think about some other languages like German and some other Eastern European languages, as well as a bunch of other around the world, the W makes the V sound. So instead of water, it's water. Or if you think of a bad um, Transylvania movie, I want some more candy. The solvent is usually water. And if you think about that in a really bad corny accent, that might help you remember ah, 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 that the solvent is usually the water and it's what does the dissolving. Okay, that's the end of my bad accent. <laughs> so let's do a few examples. All right, so let's look at salt water and ocean water. Now, I know, this is where it gets a little tricky because if we think of seawater or salt water or ocean water, it's not just salt and water. There's a lot of other chemicals. There's plankton. There are all kinds of things floating around. 
but we're just going to look at a solution of salt water and assume it's just salt and water. All right, so if we look at salt water, what is the solvent? The solvent is the water. No, oh, I guess my bad accent's going to be coming back. The solvent is the water. And what would the solute be? What is actually dissolving in the water? The NaCl or the salt. All right, let's do another one. Now remember, solutions dissolve the solute at a molecular level. So it's not just that there's chunks that we can't see, it's that it breaks down the molecules apart into the individual molecules. So it doesn't break the sugar into something else, it just breaks the big chunks of sugar that you can see into little tiny molecules and there's water molecules in between. All right, so in this case, my solution is coffee. So what would my solvent be? My solvent would be the water. And what do I dissolve in water to get coffee? There's two things. And the one thing in this picture you can see, and the other thing is already in it. What do you think? So the solute would be the sugar and the coffee beans, because the coffee is dissolved in the water, and then in this case we're adding sugar. So there can be more than one solute. All right, so our solution in this case is soda pop, which in case you haven't noticed is Mountain Dew, which is my absolute favorite soda pop and so bad for you, because it has bromiated vegetable oil, which is a little sign tangent, but it's terrible, terrible for you. That being said, mm, it's delicious. <laughs> okay, so solution is soda. What would the solvent be? Again, it's water. And what's dissolved in that water to make Mountain Dew or any other type of soda? Well, there's definitely carbon dioxide and there's other chemicals. There's high fructose corn syrup, a bunch of chemicals you can't pronounce. There's bromiated vegetable oil, which is what's super bad for you. And you have carbon dioxide. Now, I specifically listed carbon dioxide different because what phase is carbon dioxide? Remember, our phases are solid, liquid, and gas. So carbon dioxide is a gas. It's the bubbles. So not only do we have the chemicals that you think of, like the sugars dissolved in Mountain Dew, the coloring, but we also have a gas dissolved in a liquid. And that reminds us that solutions don't have to be made only of liquids or only a solid in a liquid. It can be a gas that's dissolved in a liquid as well. So let's look at some examples. Solutions can be different combinations of solid, liquid, and gases. So let's look at a gas that is dissolved in another gas. Well, argon is dissolved in the air. It's all mixed up, just like the air that we breathe has nitrogen and oxygen and carbon dioxide. Argon's another one that's dissolved in the air. A liquid that's dissolved in gas. Water droplets, like the clouds. Water droplets are dissolved in the air, and that would be, therefore, a solution. Now, be careful. This is like one of the only times water is the solute, okay, because the water is dissolved in the air, in the clouds. So that's like the one example of where water is the solute, one of few. All right, what about a solid in the air? Well, if you have dust, so maybe not quite this much dust, but, you know, showing you a few flecks of dust wasn't going to show up really good. But think about, oh, here's a good example. On a really sunny day, you know, if you look over by the window, it's like you can see the dust floating in the air, kind of almost looks like snowflakes. That would be a good example of this one. The solid dust in the air. So not so much that it's so smoky, but just like a little bit. All right, let's look at some other examples. Now our solvent is the liquid, and the gas is dissolved. So the carbon dioxide is dissolved in seltzer. Now, the reason they specifically said seltzer, seltzer is just water with the bubbles. And actually, in a lot of other countries, that's usually what you get. If you ask for bottled water, they give you bubbly water. And so you have to ask for non-bubbled water to get regular water. So if you ever travel somewhere else, be aware of that. Now, we could have said soda pop, but we didn't because there's other chemicals. So this is just the pure carbon dioxide dissolved in water. A liquid would be fruit juice in water. So those are two liquids. And a solid would be seawater because you have the solid NaCl, table salt, dissolved in the liquid water. All right, you can also have a gas dissolved in a solid, and so that would be really dense smoke. You could have a liquid dissolved in a solid, which would be yogurt, 
and oops, you can have a solid dissolved in a solid. So for example, gold and silver alloy. And so for the picture on this one, what I put in here was some jewelry. So I'm sure you've all seen yellow gold. Well, that's pure gold. If you add silver to it, then you have what's called white gold. If you add copper, you have what's called rose gold. And get this a little bigger so we can see it decently here. It talks about if you have pure gold versus how much copper you add to get rose gold versus how much silver you add. And so different combinations of gold and silver or gold and copper or silver and copper are going to give you the different colors that people see in jewelry. All right, what's the difference between lemon water and sucking on a lemon? And of course, it's concentration. So if you're sucking on a lemon, lemon, the lemon flavoring molecule in lemon juice are relatively concentrated, right? Concentrated means there's a lot of lemon flavor molecules in that little drop. Whereas when you just drop a lemon wedge in here, there's only a little bit of lemon in the water compared to the entire glass of water. So the lemon flavoring molecules in a pitcher of lemonade are relatively dilute or not very much. So that's what we're going to talk about first. A solution can be described in qualitative terms. Qualitative mean quality or description. As you probably know, sugar water will be too sweet if too much sugar is added to the solution. When making sugar water, you have to keep in mind the amounts of solute and the solvent. So which one is the solute? The sugar. And the solvent is the water. If you are discussing the amount of solute and the amount of solvent, you are talking about the concentration of a solution. So here's our next vocab word, concentration. Weak, not very sweet sugar water is said to have a relatively low concentration of solute, in this case the sugar. Strong, sweet sugar water has a relatively high concentration of sugar. So concentration is how much of the solute you have compared to how much of the solvent. A solution with a smaller amount of solute is a dilute solution. So dilute is our next vocabulary word. One with greater amount of solute is called a concentrated solution. The terms dilute and concentrated are relative. So what we mean by that is, which is too spicy for you? Okay, are you the kind of person that can have fire salsa and you're like, yeah, no big deal, I like it, no problem. Or are you the kind of person where if you even get medium, you're like, oh my goodness, I feel like my tongue is going to fall off. Mild is about all I can handle. When I get medium, ooh, I'm like, whoa, too spicy. But one of my brothers can just dump Tabasco sauce on his food, and that's how he likes it. It's good. So it's relative. I like mine very dilute. But my brother Joel, who likes the super spicy stuff, would say medium is dilute. Either way, I think we can all agree that the fire salsa is very concentrated. But just so that you know, dilute and concentrated, people kind of use more freely. It's not really numerical, which is why, of course, in chemistry, we have to add numbers. A solution can be described in quantitative terms. So quantitative, meaning quantity, meaning you have to have numbers. The terms dilute and concentrated are qualitative, non-numerical measures of concentration. For chemistry work, the concentration of a solute in a solvent is often expressed in terms of percentage, a numerical or quantitative measure. For example, a 3% salt water solution contains 3% salt, 97% water. There are other more informative ways to express the concentration of a solution, which we'll talk about in upcoming lessons. For example, if 6 grams of salt is added to 1 liter of water, the concentration can be written as a mass volume ratio of 6.0 grams per liter. But for this lesson, we're just going to look at percentages. So which one of these would be more dilute? The first beaker or the second beaker? The second beaker would be more dilute. The first beaker would be more concentrated because there's a higher concentration or higher percentage of solute compared to the solvent. All right, let's pick this up in the next recording.